everybody, and welcome back to another video game analysis. I think that actually went well, but I ruined it. I always ruin those intros. I'm always bad at them. So today, I want to explain a little bit, because it's going to seem awfully familiar and very similar to the last video we did, but um, I want to make something really clear. Last time, I was explaining how the level design in a tutorial stages, or levels, or tutorial areas, whatever you want to call them, I shown how the developers used their tools to teach you how to play the game. This time, I'm going to show more of how they're going to do that. Now, there were a couple of moments where I did explain things that I would explain in this video. Like, for example, when I talked about Earthbound last time, I pointed out a certain NPC in front of uh, Porky Pokey's house. And um, to make that clear, you know, I did that because it does show, you know, it, it's a double, it's a double thing. It does show that, it does draw you to that area to teach you more about the game and to teach you more about your environment and where you can go. But at the same time, it really more so is related to this video, where it shows that they placed one of their assets in that specific spot to get you to continue to that area. So, I just want to make that distinction clear, because that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, we've got a few things to explain, so... Let's get started. Super Mario Bros. is really where level design got started, period. So I thought this would be the... I, I, I can't not do this video without showing this off. So here, you start right away with this huge stretch of land, and it shows the three types of background elements you have right away, and I think that's a really smart choice. Now, what makes... Since Super Mario Bros. is the first of its kind, I can't judge it for that, but... The only way you can do level design is you have a fully flat stretch of land that's shown in this shot here. And you know, it, like it's not like Sonic the Hedgehog where they're able to like really manipulate the way the the ground looks. And the best they can do is bottomless pits. So the first time I died because they designed the level in a way where you can't avoid that first Goomba unless you know to jump. And then like the flashing question mark block is also a really good use of designing an element. It's because it's flashing and has a question mark. You want to find out what's in there. Here's another one here that I really like where the uh, pipes there, you have to, when you fall off of them, the Goombas were placed in a way where Mario has to jump on them. And that's where I learn, and you know, right there, you, you learn how to hit, how to, how to defeat. And like, I tried to do that with the, the mushroom after avoiding the first mushroom. Because I thought maybe it's an enemy. I don't know. So I jumped on it and it made me big. Now I know it's good. You know, increasing size is good. Here's another example where the Koopa was positioned by that block <laughs> in a way where you have to stomp on it. And on top of that, you have to stomp on it a second time really fast based on your position. And you know, like when I see a new enemy, I know how to attack it. I just want to see it work. And I love the four Go Go Goombas there because it also shows that there's no way you can't learn how that star works. That those two pyramids there were really well done too. The two pyramids there uh, have the first one where you can hit land, you know, gives you a chance to learn, and the second one is bottomless, so you, you learn that's where you can die. Now that's not very significant at first, the level design of, of that stairwell into the flagpole, but it does show the stairway is a great tool to show that this is progress. It's all based off of, it, it, like with like cartoons or anything, or anything with mise-en-scene or really, even movies, you know, like, it all has to do with people making connections. You know, that's how, the, that's a core element of level design that people have to consider. Like, you know, the shapes of things, the positions of things, like look at this, uh, look at these beams here. They're positioned in a wavelength pattern and they're cut off by this one block with the enemy in it. Like, that, this is a great place just to reinforce the idea of how to attack and how to jump and how to run. And now I learned <laughs> how Koopa shells can hurt you. Ooh, a good dodge. And, you know, more deliberate shapes here, you know? Like, for one thing, like, you see all these... They didn't have to make all the single layer stuff on, on the top, right? Underneath the score and the world number and everything. But it is a good way to show you that you can go over there. I, I, I got that completely by accident. And this is a good lesson because I was so distracted by the one up, I got I fell down the bottomless pit. And now that's fully confirmed that you don't want to go down a bottomless pit. Because how else are you going to get up? You know what I mean? And there was me trying to see maybe I can defeat that enemy the same way, but it doesn't work that way. 
And yeah, you know, even basic shapes like funnels or, you know, staircases, um, you know, like the guiding point. You, you have like larger areas like this. The sh like you ever see the greater and or less than sign? It's the same idea. It guides you to where you want to go. And, you know, the idea of direction without having signs or anything, that's, that's the big point of level design. And that's easy for a 2D plane. And a 3D plane is more complicated. But, you know, either way, the rules are still the same. You use very noticeable elements from your game to guide you to certain areas. Like, um, the coin. The coin flashes in Mario Bros. This is similar to what I said about the question mark block. The coin can, like, let's say you have a placebo bottomless pit, but there's a coin down there. Why on earth would they put that there? So you go down there, you find out it's a secret area. Or, um, you're in a level and you want to know which way is progress, there's like a fork in the road. You'd probably use some clues, like if there's more enemies in one side, you would probably assume that would be a shorter way than ones without, or like a longer way, or maybe even be the wrong way, it'll take you to a dead end. You know, it's like, it, that's the kind of thinking you have to have. The shape of things, the positioning of things, it has to be very, very specific. So... Yeah, we got another example for you, another first of its kind, and another classic. So, you know, obviously if I'm going to use Mario, I want to use its counterpart to The Legend of Zelda. They use, you know, the isometric 3D, blue, blah, 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 it's still 2D, whatever. Unfortunately, I already beat this dungeon, but honestly, I'm sorry, I've been pressed for time this week, so I just redid the, I just, I'm just taking you through a little tour. Uh, now, something that's blatantly obvious is that each dungeon, each room in this dungeon, is the same square it's the same it's a similar thing to how uh, in mario brothers like i said before the ground is limited to being flat unless you put some bottomless pits in there so you know like but you know how do you make good design out of something that looks so similar well it, i mean the easy thing is you find different combinations of blocks and enemies to use for each part of the level uh, so each room has a defining characteristic to it and you know I'm you know like the blocks being able to limit your movement there the, the amount of enemies what kind of enemy really matters like there's four blocks and a lot of enemies that were hard to kill now there's four blocks towards the middle more and it gives me more maneuverability around the, the edges and I had more enemies tougher enemies to kill but there were a lesser amount this I think was really cool and it's a staple for Zelda, but I think it's really cool that they pulled this off on a NES, right? Um, I mean, you have to think about the Atari days, where yeah, that door opened after I defeated those enemies. It locked me in. It shows that it's a significant point of progress. That one block looks ah, that one block looked uh, suspicious. There's only one. Usually, there's an even number. So trying to push it, you know, it's a little, it's it's little context clues like that that really matter in level design games like this. And yeah, there is always the argument that the original Zelda is a little more cryptic than anything else. But I I I usually agree with the camp that say they do give you a good amount of like you just have to have the right mindset, you know? Like the missing door on the bottom, you would you know, it might be a bombable space. You know, it, it, it doesn't follow the characteristics that other ones do. The other rooms do. You know, there's this you know what, it's like something I failed to mention with uh, the goalpost in Mario is uh, uh, is the fact that the goalpost is a consistency. You know, that consistency helps you understand where secrets are. You know, you break that consistency and then everything falls apart. You know, and like speaking of that, the next bit I'll have will really show you what I mean with that. But consistency is very important because it shows you how you can make re regular movement, but then it also lets you explore into new areas. So our next example will be uh, a, m a more recent game. Uh, it's gonna be a 3D game, uh, but you know something to make clear is this is an example of a level I did not like that I felt had poor level design, but it wasn't incorrect level design at the same time. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a bit. But um, you know the big point here is that. Level design is tricky. It's it's something people go to school for. It, it's not something you can just do. Like what I like about Mario Maker is you know it lets people explore level design, and I actually love when um, and people mention it too on Mario Maker. They mention that hey, I am a level design student, and you get to see the creative things they do. And you know Mario Maker, I I, I would have used that, but then I would just would have taken up the whole video, and I would rather just switch things up a lot more. But 
Mario Maker has so many assets and so many tools. See, the individual item for your assets, what I mean is it has to be very distinct looking. It has to be very, it has to be very obvious in what it does. You know, take the clown car, for example, they put in Mario Maker. The clown car is clearly a vehicle. It has a round dome shape, but a circle top with an opening in it. So clearly, especially with the logic of Mario, you can jump in it. And the propeller on the bottom is very noticeable because it's green. You have these very vibrant big colors. And that's why I always say colorful games really matter. You know, be able to distinguish things, especially in a cartoony setting. So, you know, like all of those elements come together. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you do have all the great assets, but it doesn't come out very well. You know, like we talked about this before in concept and executions. So, I mean, the level design is a huge part of that. So, 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 let's move on. I, I, you know, I know I really pick, I've been picking on Sonic lately. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I, you know, like actually, Sonic Lost World is actually, I was one of the people in the camp who liked the game. You know, I, I mean, I really recognized it wasn't a perfect game and had really bad parts. Like, for example, this level, I hate. I, I, this is the one of the few levels in this game. Like, there are a few more I, I probably don't like more, but this is the first point of the game, and it was only World 2, which was troubling, where I said, God, when is that level going to end? It's so boring. It, it, it's it's so hard, easy to die. Like, it's ridiculous. And the thing is, it's yeah, it, it's, it's going to be explained as something, as something simple. It's flat and huge. You know, it doesn't compress you into a certain area. Like, Sonic Lost World has this huge motif of tube levels where you have narrow passages. And when they try to open that up into a more flat world, it's it, it just feels boring and there's too much space. And I can see the developers had good ideas and they tried. And I'll show you some examples of that. They tried to make things more varied. But it just didn't work out. Here, you know, I'm trying to do something fancy. Yeah, I'm like, then I'm like, ah, forget it. And yeah, they give you choices here. That's really good. There are really good ideas in this level. Like, the 2D sections are definitely a little better. But, you know, they should have refined Sonic a little more when it comes to the control department. Because, you know, you'll, you'll see it a thousand times. I keep slipping off platforms. You know, I abuse that double jump, but sometimes it hinders me. And, you know, like, it, it really does show off. You know what it is? It's like, it shows off the, how the parkour works, this section. But it, they didn't do it in a way that's very effective or fun. Like, um, you know, it's like, I, would, I used to be a music major. And part of that was we had to write sections of music that shows we understand a concept. So you take voicing, for example, you know, the ways the voices come together without, you know, and you had rules. We were following a classical style. So it's like the way the voicings, all the, all the notes come together to make a, like multiple melodies going on, make harmony. So we were doing that, and, you know, I made an example that perfectly followed the rules. And I knew it didn't sound good, and my professor said, yeah, you know, you did a good job. It doesn't sound very interesting at all. It sounds boring, but you got it right. That's exactly what this level design is. And, you know, the thing with Sonic Lost World that got it wrong was there was there's a huge lack of consistency in this game. And I know they were trying to do that. I know they wanted to make the game in a way where there's a lot of things to do and a lot of ways to show off this parkour system. But, you know, this is not what happened when they introduced the boost formula. You know, like, uh, if you wanted to show off a new formula, you should have a lot more consistency. And I probably would be better at these controls if I had that more consistent, th consistent thing. And you throw in some, like, parts of the level where it would challenge my skills a little bit. And in all fairness to Sonic Lost World, they do do that with red rings and whatnot. But this level, like, you can see it. They give you choices on where to go, but it's flat and it's huge. And all this space is open, and, and, you know, they try to fill it with those patches of dirt that slow you down, but it's like, it, the point of Sonic is to speed up, so it kind of takes away something that's, you know, kind of necessary to make the game fun. No matter what, you're going to have a mindset, if it's a character that's been well established, you're going to have a mindset of what you want to do with that character and how you're going to control that character. All new gameplay aspects is just what makes it fun to play you know it's, it makes it so you have whole new level ideas the only consistency really with Sonic Lost Worlds is you have to hit you know like classic Sonic games 
you have to hit uh, uh, animals uh, capsule. And you know, I don't want to sound negative. I, I am one of the few people who liked this game. It's just there's levels like these I, I really couldn't stand. You know, it's long. Even these 2D sections, like vertical 2D sections, are fine and all, but it's really not something you should abuse because, you know, I mean, like I get it. They used vertical sections. The same the show off Sonic's parkour system. You know, I really I do get it. But again, that brings back the argument that yeah, you did it to show it off, but it's not in you know, it doesn't it's it's not something you would use in a professional like if this level was made for a classroom, if some kid made this level so he can graduate uh, a level des a game design school or whatever, they say, Okay, you passed. You know, this look level looks good, you have a lot going on here. You know, here's an example of what I'm talking about. You have, like, it, like it doesn't look interesting. It's huge. It's flat. You have these little. You have to stick to a very constricted area. And what sense does that make? You know, like why would why would you make a huge area but make constricting little parts? Like, yeah, it's your choice which part to go to. Like, you have a lot of lefts and rights and forwards here, but it's still like no. You know, it's just like I don't dig it. I don't dig it. So yeah, you get again. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this one more time. They give you the choices here. That's fine, but you know, they should have they should have made this area smaller, or they should have made this tube like the left side should be one part, one third of the tube. The right side should be another third of the tube. And there's a lot of things I can say about Sonic Loss, or like the speed up, the run button should have been a slow down button. You know, but you know, that's another argument for another day. So yeah, you know, like, there's a lot of things that go on, and I know I barely scratched the surface when it comes to level design, but I, I think I've given you guys a good basic overview. The big things is you need some consistent patterns that create the identity of the game you're playing, and you need to be aware of the kind of environments you're creating and how to make that interesting. And another example I could have used other than Mario Maker, which is great, you know, that's perfect. It actually lets you explore level design. It lets you figure out, oh, this is hard to other people because I know all the answers. I know how this works. Maybe I should refine this so it's a little simpler people understand. It, well, another example I would have loved to use, but we would have too many bits, is Kirby. And I used that last time, so it wasn't worth it. Because Kirby, you know, it's an easy game, but they design the levels in a way where it's really fun. And, you know, it shows that difficulty is, you know, it doesn't matter. And then there's Mega Man. There's another example I would have loved to use, because that level design is very difficult, but it's still fun and it doesn't get you easily killed like it does in a game like Sonic Lost World in that certain level. So... Yeah, next time then, I think we're concluded here, next time, um, I've been picking on Sonic too much, so I want to do an, a, a positive look into Sonic, we're actually going to look into, I, I think it's something that's overlooked at, but it is, I mean, people recognize it, but I think it's something that's not directly talked about, is how Sonic, the character, like let's pretend he's a real life character, how he learned and developed his abilities over time. And, you know, there's a lot more to it than you would think, so next time we're going to look into that. I liked my attitude today. I was like, yeah. If there's anything I missed, if there's anything I got wrong, if there's anything you would like to add to the conversation, please do not hesitate to leave a comment, a like, and a subscribe. You know, the sharing thing. Come on, do the things you do. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Billy, your video game analyzer. Have a good day, good night, whenever you're watching this, and I'll see you next time.